Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at volumetric scattering and fog and how you do it. So this is pretty simple to set up. Um, if you haven't done it before, it might be a little bit confusing. Uh, there's two basic ways to think about this. The first way is to think about it as a global scattering effect. So everything is sort of doused in fog. And, and the second way is to have a like floor of fog. I'll show you how to do both ways um, as we get into this tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is create a light. So let's just create a light, physical light. And I'm just gonna move that into position. Uh, and I'm also gonna make this light a spotlight. And if I go down to spot, I'm gonna increase the cone angle to 90 degrees, so probably about 70 degrees. Um, and then under that we've got volume. This is really important. For now we're going to turn this up to 1.0 but I'm going to reduce it at a later stage in the video. Um, and I'm just going to take a render now to show you what it looks like before we add any volume rendering in. Um, also, just to note, I have global illumination on. So um, if you want to use my exact render settings, that's what I'm doing. So I take an IPR. So as you can see, the light is illuminating all of our tubes that are in the scene and they're highly reflective and as is the ground. Um, and obviously you can see the bounce light coming off that nearest one. Uh, so let's set some volume in. So to add volume in, we're going to go to our render settings. We're going to go to output, scroll down to the bottom, and you've got atmosphere. Click the checker box, create redshift volume. And you'll see the attributes here on the right. Um, another way to access it is if you open the hypershade editor and you go to utilities, you'll have it there if you can't find it. So at its default settings, as you can see, the scene appears to have atmosphere. Um, it's casting shadows and within the atmosphere, as you can see here coming, falling away from the tops of our uh, tubes. Um, and we can adjust this somewhat. So the first uh, option you'll see is enable. Obviously, if you disable it, it disables it. Um, tint. So essentially this drives the color of the fog. So if I change this to blue, for instance, it will be blue. Uh, but it also drives the intensity of it based on the value of the color that you're using. So the lighter the color, the more intense it will be. And if I slide that down to a darker color, the less intense it will be or effectively sort of more transparent. I'm going to leave that on white for now though. Scattering uh, is another way to control the density. So if you increase that a lot, obviously you get a lot of density. Uh, we're gonna keep it at one for now. So now I'm gonna add in a ground fog effect. So I'm gonna move my light up top to make this a little bit more obvious. And I'm gonna widen the cone angle to 90 and increase the fall off angle. So now the goal is to make it appear as though there's only fog at the bottom of our shot. So I'm gonna select the volume node in the hypershade editor, which is that one there, just so I can get it on the attribute editor on the right hand side there. Um, and then we're going to increase the attenuation. So as you do this, you'll notice that because we've got a height set, um, it's going to bring essentially the height down um, until you get to that point there which is uh, a value of 1.1 1 .1 in height. If you want it to be subtle, essentially, the higher attenuation, the subtler it will be. So if I increase this in like 50, it's almost invisible. Um, however, you can offset that with the scattering. So you'll get more volume appearing there. However, it doesn't appear that our light is creating any actual scattering within the scene. It's just appearing around our objects. So we can adjust this uh, by creating a mission. So if we take our emission slider and just slide it a little bit along, you'll see that we're starting to get emission now. As you add emission, obviously it's creating a global illumination effect where the fog itself is illuminating any, anything nearby, So, which is this large plane that I've got here for a background. So obviously if you want your fog to be a lot more obvious, if you increase its emission quality to be very close to white, then it will obviously be a lot more visible. Uh, horizon blur, if you turn it all the way to zero, you won't be able to see the horizon. This is based on your environment or essentially anywhere that's beyond any geometry. Uh, so like an HDR image, for example, if you're using a dome light. Um, so if you, hit it, hit, uh, if you set it to zero, it will appear like that. And then as you increase it, um, you'll see that blur on the horizon there. And then obviously increasing the height will increase the height of the fog as well. So something like that might be what you're after depending on your scene. 
or something like that might be what you're after as well. Personally, I find the horizon blur to be a bit too obvious. Um, it's got, it doesn't sort of taper enough. You can sort of offset it with attenuation to get it to look a little bit more sort of realistic, but generally, depending on what sort of shot you're going for, I'd probably just keep it off. Um, if you are trying to blend it into an HDRI image in the background, then you'd probably want it on. But yeah, I generally find that um, something like this, if you're just create, trying to create a foggy scene, might be the way to go. Um, you could also change your emission color to be something darker, and then that way you're, you're gonna start to be able to see the scattering effect from the um, light source again. So if I just increase that scattering, you can start to see that again. And then just bring that back up to get it to look something like that. So you get sort of a creepy foggy scene. I'm just gonna drop the scattering down again, just so it's a bit more obvious where the ground is. So we've got a couple of options here, ground point and ground normal. Uh, so the ground normal is just the direction in which the light is, uh, which the fog is coming out of. Um, and the ground point is where your ground starts. So X, Y, Z are these are what these fields are. So if I change the ground point on the Y axis to say one, it'll make it a lot higher. And if I set it to zero, it'll be the scene zero. Negative one will drop it down again. So if you're trying to sort of offset that because you maybe not got your ground plane at the zero point of your scene, you can just use that in negatives to get it to go lower or higher or whatever you want. Ground normal, uh, like I said, is the direction. So if I wanted to put it on an angle, I've got one and one, one on the um, X and one on the Y. Let's put it on an angle like that. Turn that to zero. Then it makes it go straight across that direction. Generally, you're probably gonna have it at zero on all, I would imagine. Um, there's not a whole lot of use cases that I can think to um, use that, but just so you know, it is there. So far as ray contributions go, um, if I turn the environment down, you'll see that we're starting to see the environment in the background. Um, this would be where your HDRI image is if you're using a dome light, or your dome light for, for that matter. So the lower that goes, obviously, the more transparent that becomes. Camera, you're probably not gonna be using this a whole lot. If you wanna affect the overall transparency of the fog, um, you might wanna adjust the camera, to say something like 0.5 or whatever. Uh, generally, I would adjust that visibility of the fog with the light source that is affecting it, or up here in the general settings. Um, reflection and refraction are basically whether or not the fog will be visible to a reflection. So if you turn that down, any reflective objects won't be uh, won't see the fog, uh, and so therefore you won't see the fog in the reflections. And as you turn it up, obviously you get the opposite. So if you look at this pillar here on the left, now that I've turned the reflection down, you can actually see the horizon. Um, but as I turn it up, the fog is too dense for the reflection to see the horizon so therefore you uh, can't see it anymore. GI, um, if you increase that it means basically uh, GI bounces will affect the fog. So generally this will create a much lighter fog so you would want to get once again might want to balance it out with scattering um, but you could just sort of feather it in as necessary. So as it, if with it all the way up, obviously the light that's coming from above is bouncing off the floor and then re-illuminating the fog. Environment Alpha Replace um, is essentially for compositors. It's designed so if you were wish, uh, wishing to sort of remove the fog effect from anywhere where you can see the environment in the background, um, you could, um, but generally you'd want to actually keep that on otherwise. So let's have a look at our light now um, and I'll create that cone effect again. So now we can see our light in the render. Um, I've just increased the scattering to 10 and the attenuation is still at 10. So if I wanted to make it so the light was having less of a contribution to the, to the overall fog, um, basically you just adjust that with the under the volume tab of your light on the attribute editor uh, just by sliding it down it's going to affect the scattering less and less and less and this can be quite useful if you've got multiple lights in your scene but you don't want you want to light an object but you don't want to light uh, the fog so like right now I've got the objects all lit but by that light but it's not actually lighting the fog um, the fog is just being lit by currently by its um, emission, uh, which as I showed you before is this here. So if I reduce that to black, then you won't be able to see the fog anymore. And then I could once again 
increase the contribution scale and as you can see the fog becomes more visible again uh, and samples you would want to increase this if you're finding that you're getting a lot of noise in areas of your fog um, so maybe as high as 512 but probably generally between 64 and 128 are going to be okay so something like 64 will reduce um, noise depending on your render settings obviously so that means that the light is going to shoot more rays at the part at this essentially like the particles of the fog to illuminate them and reduce noise or fireflies possibly as well and um, yeah that's pretty much all there is to it otherwise it just is um, sort of basic lighting theory um, things like you know if you want more defined um, shadows then you just want to make sure your light source is smaller so if I reduce the cone angle of this I'm just run the IPR so if you pay attention to the light falling away there um, as I make the light source smaller that is going to become sharper and more obvious and the same for the shadow that is creating um, and that's just your standard lighting theory coming to practice there so yeah but yeah like I said that's that's pretty much all there is to it uh, it does require a bit of playing it's sort of a it's an unusual way of thinking about fog if you're because you're not really seeing it physically in a scene like you would with the sort of Maya fluids or something like that but it's super fast to render uh, as you can see and um, it's pretty effective so I recommend trying it out. You can be much more subtle than I have been in this tutorial. Obviously, I was pushing everything as far as I could to give examples, but um, you could make some really nice subtle effects for environments um, if you wish. So yeah, if you uh, like this video, make sure you click the like button though so uh, other people can find it on YouTube. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe because I'm putting up all sorts of tutorials every week, a couple at least at the moment. And um, yeah, so if you're into CG stuff, make sure you are subscribed to see those. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.